Throughout the centuries, church people have gravitated either towards or away from different activities. For some, it was a conviction that they had. For others, it really just became a legalistic requirement that they felt they and others should follow or abstain from, relatively speaking. Do you remember any activities that you weren't allowed to do when you were growing up that, if we're honest, had no biblical foundation? I want you to let me know in the comments. And while you're there, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons as well. Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Bert and this is my jam. You know, I think that for a lot of people growing up in the church, Halloween was one of those forbidden activities. Which, I have to say, makes me glad that I never started going to church until I was in high school. <laughs> it would have been awful to miss out on all the candy me and my buddies would collect in our small prairie town. And trust me, we covered the whole town. Then made sure we revisited the homes that gave out the best stuff. <laughs> so, although I never experienced missing out on Halloween as a kid, I know many people who did. And we're never really given a good reason as to why. The prevailing theory that I've heard over the years was that Halloween was the Catholic Church's attempt to take over an ancient Celtic pagan festival called Samhain. Yet, as my friend John Albiston pointed out in an ex excellent article that he recently wrote, what do the ancient Celts, Romans, and Greeks have to say about the festival of Samhain? Nothing. The word literally does not exist in their history. There is literally nothing whatsoever written either by the ancient Celts or their Roman neighbors that even remotely resembles our practice of Halloween. The article points out that the word Samhain itself is not even found in any historical text until the Middle Ages which was about a thousand years after Hallowed Eve is mentioned as the night before All Saints Day, when the church commemorated those who were martyred for their faith. The fact is, the modern practice of trick-or-treating and carving pumpkins is a very recent development that originated in North America. And interestingly, do you know where the first recorded door-to-door -door trick or treating took place? Not Stonehenge or the Scottish Moors, but a little prairie town right here in Alberta. So rather than believe some made-up story just because it tickles your ear, do your research. Look for the truth. Paul, who was a prominent leader in the early church, told a young pastor at that time named Timothy, there's going to come a time when people won't listen to the truth, but will go around looking for teachers who will tell them just what they want to hear. They will turn from the truth and eagerly listen to senseless stories. Sad thing is that there are people who I've dealt with over the years and even today, who fulfill what Paul predicted. They heard or read such and such, and it doesn't matter if the Bible speaks directly against it. They refuse to accept the truth because they'd rather believe the lie that has tickled their ears. I'm not sure why people want to believe things that, they, that can't be substantiated by biblical or historical records, but my hope is that if you're watching this, that you will always seek and accept the truth rather than follow what some influencer has told you. And that includes me, because I'm, I'm not infallible. I make mistakes. So feel free to put me to the test. Just please remember to follow Paul's guidelines to the Colossian church. Let your speech at all times be gracious and pleasant. <laughs> Let me pray for you before I go. Father, thank you. Thank you for the fact, Lord, that you said 
that when we seek the truth, we will find it, and the truth will set us free. And Lord, we know that that is really an arrow that points in your direction. You are truth. Lord, and that those who earnestly seek the truth will ultimately find you. And so, Lord, I pray that for those that are watching today, God, that they would, as hard as it might be, to set aside some of those traditions and things that they've heard and, and look for and discover the truth of who you are and your word and, and what you've done through history. And I pray that you would just bless them in a wonderful way, God, and that they would be able to enjoy the interaction with those in their own neighborhood as they um, welcome those young people to their doors this Halloween. God, so that we, as your church, can shine your light, the light of your love, to the people in our neighborhood, each and every day, and even more so maybe when they come to our doors. And I thank you for that, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful week and, uh, and a safe Halloween. Bye for now.